Welcome to the channel folks, Clunkers and Classics. We got a good episode today. We're going to upgrade and drastically improve the cooling system for this Nomad running the LS engine. Now, I'm going to run this just sitting in here. Uh, this is the factory radiator from the 2001 Silverado pickup. Now, why I'm using that, uh, mainly, it's got two extra hoses, okay? One here and one here. And they kind of go, now this will eventually be, this was the overflow from the truck. That's eventually gonna be sitting in the wheel well up here with the air cleaner when I get the wheel wells and front end on there. And it's, I just didn't want to mess with the original, you know, the old 68 Chevelle and just have two top radiator hose, bottom radiator hose, that's it. Okay, so I've already replaced, I forgot to bring them out of my car. I've already replaced these two bottom, these two heater hoses here. They go on the bottom here to the water pump. Um, and I bought three new hoses there's the bottom hose here uh this is another hose which splices into the heater hose okay so we're going to replace all the hoses and replace the radiator with an all aluminum one okay now you could and also that uh these transmission lines if you wanted to, you could use the old 68 to 72, whatever, Chevy radiator for this if you wanted to. But, like I said, I'd rather use a truck. So on the, on the original one, these are probably going to be uh, standard, whereas these transmission lines here are metric. So basically what I, and the, and the plan from the beginning is to get an all aluminum radiator okay so this radiator will fit in there now it looks like it's sticking up high here but it's got two I'll show you on an, on the new radiator it's got two prong things that stick down with rubber gaskets and just got to drill a big hole down here and then it'll plop right down in there and it'll get pretty close to the top of this core support here. And then we'll see if the original shroud will fit. If not, we can make something. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. Um, also, the shroud is here. Hopefully this will work. This is the original shroud off the truck. Top, bottom. Okay, we're going to put all that, we're going to do the whole cooling system. New hoses, new radiator, put on the shroud, get everything working good. Now on this truck, I'm not sure on the newer ones if you're doing an LS swap, but this particular truck has a mechanical fan. Okay, and we're going to keep that. I'm a big believer in, in not relying on electric-only fans. This, this is, puts out a lot of uh air and you, you won't ever overheat with this fan but electric backup fans are always good okay um so we're leaving this on there i know a lot of people doing ls swaps they want to save 5.2 horsepower by taking this fan off uh you could take it off pretty easily if you're like drag racing so you take it off but as i said before we're going to be using this vehicle for a lot of drag and drive events hot rod power tours 99.99 percent of the time it's going to be on the highway it's going to be you know driving it's not going to be racing up the drag strip so we don't need to do all drag racing stuff and delete a whole bunch of stuff to gain a couple of horsepower so we're leaving that on there Okay, we'll go over uh, 
but I am a big believer in backup electric fans. And why? Well, the most recent example was going on Hot Rod Power Tour this year and the Nova. Although we had this year was not El Nino, but the cousin of El Nino, El something. And it was just extremely hot all summer. Well over 100 degrees. And this was back in what, May, June, June? And uh, I think it got upwards to 108, 109 degrees. If not, it was when I got home. But it was well over 100 degrees every day there. Um, on the highway, you're, 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 you'll be all right on most cars. If you're zipping along the highway, 60, 70, you got enough air coming in, 100 and something degrees outside, but you're going to get cool enough. The radiator's going to get cool enough. The problem is, like Hot Rod Power Tour, is you go through all these little towns, and they're all little, you know, one lane, uh, two lane blacktop type thing, and there was construction. I mean, it took four or five hours to get through this one little town, and the, and the uh, road was just jammed with people overheating, cars on the side of the road with their hoods up, trying to cool down. It was just a mess and then the lineups to get in some of them some of them weren't too bad depends on what time of day but i mean i remember nashville super speedway there oh it had to be an hour or two wait it was just lined up for miles and same thing cars all over the place just uh hoods up uh so anyway that's when your electric fans come in so before i left I rigged up a fan in this one uh, for one of my junk cars. I think it was a Honda. So I got a electric, little electric fan there, and it was just enough to do the trick. Okay, big believer in them. My Jeep here, I got a got an aluminum radiator in this one too. I put it in. It wasn't sponsored. And this Jeep, it's a V8. And it, it crawls up all the Colorado mountains like a billy goat, 13, 14,000 feet up. It needs to be cool. Okay, and I got two electric fans on here. Just back up this one here. And it's got, it's got a factory fan also, but it, it did screw up. Actually, a wire melted or something. And it's got a big hydraulically electrically hybrid type fan on there it's a, just a one big fan that works very good but it crapped out on me the backup fans it works now but if you're driving on the highway you don't need any fans you don't need any fans or nothing it will not go over halfway okay this Jeep here, I haven't put any electric extra backup on it because I don't use it for, it's four wheel drive, but I haven't, I use that one mainly. Okay, so I'm a big believer in fans. So I wanted backup electric fans on this Nomad in case you go on hot rod power tour, cruise event, stuff like that. And you're just idling, stuck in traffic, stuck to get into the event. You're gonna overheat even if you got good factory stuff or something's going to blow you know you, it gets too hot your radiator hoses and stuff are going to blow okay so the plan was even from the beginning because i knew all this all aluminum radiator and backup electric fans so i have a sponsor on this episode alloy works i'm going to put a link to their website and the description box they sent me one a while back i got a video on it i uh they make them for all kinds of cars i mean everything you can think of they got me one for the gto i put it in there but that is uh based off the nova so 68 to 74 novas all fit fit the pontiacs you know olds omega Pontiac Ventura, Buick Apollo, Chevy Nova. They, they all fit perfectly in there. They're like three core, really thick, all aluminum. And I got one in there. So it was perfect timing. 
that they sent me an email and said, hey, you want another radiator? I said, as a matter of fact, I do. Okay, so now the first time months ago when I got the Ventura one, one for a Ventura, so it's, it's a real GTO, but same GTO is just an option, whatever. Their website search wouldn't work. It, 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 it's in there, it put in your year, make, model, and then nothing would come up. for. And I'd put in 68 Nova, 74 Nova, blah, 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 blah. Nothing would come up. And I told them that. I said, listen, people were watching the video and wanting to buy something, but nothing comes up on the search. Oh, well, we'll fix that. Well, problem is, now, certain things will come up and some doesn't. So, she's, it's, it's a woman that I was emailing with. She sent me the radiator picture and product number in the email. And I said, that's it. That's what I want. 2001 Silverado all aluminum radiator. She goes, okay. So she sent it to me. So here it is here. Um, and they're very, very reasonable. Two, three hundred bucks, guys. Don't be spending seven, eight hundred thousand dollars on, on friggin', you know, whatever brand. Two, three hundred bucks with electric fans. That's all you need right here. I mean, they're all aluminum. They're leak tested. All these places make it out of the same aluminum. What, what's the difference between this one and a, and a eight hundred dollar one? Okay, so she, so she sends me this one, and immediately I said, oh, shit, it's too big. I didn't say it to her. I said it to myself, and I went, well, so I measure it, and it's uh, 40 inches long. I measure the Nomad. One in the Nomad, it's 35. And the 40-inch won't fit. See, here's the frame rail here and here. The 35 fits perfect, just about an inch on each side. Just fits perfectly. So a 40 inch can't fit unless I cut the frame horns off, which I'm not about to do. So I go on their website and I put in the search, 2001 Silverado. A couple come up and they were lit like this, just 40 inches. Oh, so, uh, so I look at my other truck, my black truck, and it's 35 inches. But then I got my three-quarter ton here. Sure enough, it's 40 inches. So the big 40-incher is for three-quarter tons, possibly an optional upgrade in a Silverado truck from 35 to 40. And this also has the oil cooler built in so you just you don't have to use them you can block them off or whatever and these are the radiator so it's got radiator and then oil so if you're doing a hot rod with the oil cooler there you go so they're already there okay so so i searched for 35 inch no nothing comes up i searched every which way 2001 silverado blah 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 nothing 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 so I thought, well, I don't want to send it back. I could, I guess I'll use it for my truck. Now, uh, to be fair with GM, especially GM, I can't say much about aftermarket cheap tanks with the plastic ends, but I've had this truck for many, many years, seven, seven years. I've had my black truck for 10. Still got the factory radiators. The black truck's got the 35 inch. This one's got the 40. Never had a problem with plastic tank splitting, anything like that. But the aftermarket ones do uh, after a while. Get them real hot or something and they'll, they'll crack. So that's why you want an all aluminum one. So the radiator in this truck both my trucks are perfect, so I thought, well, maybe I'll use this in the three-quarter ton. 
but not right now. I'm doing, working on the Nomad. I don't really want to stop and put this one in, and there's nothing wrong with that one. So I thought, okay, well, how about... So I couldn't find a radiator through Alloy Works, 35 inch. So I went on eBay, and I bought this one. This one's a bought one from another company. I'm not going to mention them because they're not sponsored. You can just go on eBay and look. There's a whole bunch of uh, suppliers on there. So this one's the 35 inch one. Exactly the same that's in the Nomad now. So, and I bought it without the fans because the fans are another, you know, I don't know, 100 bucks, 80 bucks extra if you want fans. I don't know if there was one specifically for the Silverado with fans already on it like this one. So I thought, okay, well, I'll use these, this fan system on this one. But of course it's five inches too long. I could cut it up, shorten it or whatever. But what, I'll show you what we're gonna do here in a second. So we're gonna use this radiator. Oh, so then I emailed Ally Works and I said, well, listen, you know, I ordered the wrong radiator. I had to order another one from another supplier because your website doesn't uh, have the 35 inch. I couldn't, couldn't find it in the search. And I ordered one from another supplier, but I'll use your fans. I'll still do the video. I'll do another video later with the 40 inch you're putting it in my truck. So then she sends me a link. It's, oh, we got the 35 inch one. And I said, well, how come it doesn't come up in the search? This is no good. So guys, they're, they're a good company and everything, but they got a little problem with their search thing. So if you can't find your vehicle on there, like I said, they got Novas, Chevelles, Camaros, trucks, everything on there. Fans, no fans. Uh, just email them, click the contact and email them and say, listen, I'm looking for the 35 inch for Silverado or whatever you're looking for. And they'll most likely have it. So then I said, well, you know, it's too late. I already bought another one. And she goes, well, we'd send you another one, but you'd have to do this video, and then we could send you another one. And so I'm not going to screw around. We're going to get all this done in one one thing here on the Nomad. I know I'm rambling a lot, but I just wanted to tell you all what, what was up with this. So uh, let's go back over here. So my condenser, AC condenser, will not fit in here. Okay, it's the, the plug. Let me find it here so I can show you. Because we're kind of going to kind of do this or set it up to do it all in one thing too. So this is the AC condenser. I tried to make it work last time. I cut off the ends that they mount to trying to fit this damn thing in there and the problem is is these two ends where the freon goes in they're right up against here they're right up against and you can't you can't make them fit no matter what so the plan is to get that radiator in there just the radiator and then we're gonna mount the fan shroud in here somewhere. Even if we gotta cut this open or whatever, we're gonna mount it in there. Even if we're gonna have to alter this bracket and everything. But we're gonna mount that fan right here, the dual fans. Then we're gonna mount this on in front of the fans. So that way these stick out here somewhere. See, here's one, this is one end right here. And the other end, uh, it's it's in there somewhere. It comes up. It it'll come out here somewhere. So the AC condenser will hook up here and here instead of trying to get it up in here somewhere. So that actually be a good spacer for that fan to be out, and then mount the condenser on it. Okay, now the condenser or the uh, fans, of course, won't be. Uh, 
the way they got this set up and most people do of course they're not using the, the uh, mechanical fan so this is in front of the radiator and it's pushing this way out out to the grill now that's all fine that's that's for when you're idling in traffic and you ain't got no wind coming in through the grill and that's all fine if you're not using a mechanical fan we're using a mechanical fan and this it, this doesn't matter where they are then so we're, we're actually going to have this flipped around and it's going to be pushing air in just like the wind would through the grill to the radiator and like i said this is only a backup when you're stuck in traffic and stuff so you're not having wind anyway and you're pushing wind this way but you still got your fan going that way so it's going to work great okay and then they give you a wiring kit here oh and a relay wiring and relay to hook up these fans and the other thing is you can if pe people usually hook these up to your temperature sensor so when your temperature sensor gets up you can uh, turn them they automatically turn on and off I probably won't hook it up that way I'll probably just hook it up to a toggle switch and then when it gets hot I'll just click them on okay so that's gonna be the plan guys uh, oh I wanted to show you oh so the uh, so what we got to do is cut these tabs off here these got to be cut off to flush we don't need them okay and these are the two tabs on the bottom they got a rubber grommet we got to cut two holes well two holes big enough for this and the grommet to fit through on the bottom of the core support and then we just slide that in also very important on our aluminum radiator is to get these ones come both of them with uh, brass petcocks uh, <laughs> my aluminum radiator I put in my Jeep I didn't think of it but it had a little plastic one and sure enough uh, it starts leaking out water and I'm like oh shit I got a brand new radiator why is it leaking water get under there and the little plastic petcock had cracked or broken it was leaking out and I was like shit and I mean it was started gushing out and luckily I was like 1.2 miles from a Napa and I got a brass plug and screwed it in there so always remember that that'll be the weakest link if you got a plastic one in there it's got to be all aluminum all brass metal whatever so no plastic crap that'll break okay guys so that's the plan I know a lot of rambling but I just want to get all that out of the way um, let's just go over here real quick I'll show you the hoses these friggin hoses are not cheap I mean it's just it's just crazy here how prices up are going up and up and up I thought they were cheaper on eBay, but they're not. Bottom hose, top hose, and then this is that one I showed you here that this goes into the heater core, this goes into the overflow. It's just a weird little thing there. 122 bucks for them three. This one here was the high, this was like 48 bucks or something. And then like 28 bucks, 35 bucks or something. Anyway, 122 bucks. Crazy. And like I said, not much cheaper on eBay. Okay, so let me get started on that. I'll cut the holes in the bottom of the radiator support, get that radiator fitted in there. After that, it ain't too much. It's really just hooking up the hoses, hooking up the transmission lines. Uh, I'll just show you a little bit of that when I get to it. And then we'll try to, try to uh, rig that... Um, dual electric fans on the front and that's going to be some fabricating and stuff but I think it's going to work out great okay so I will be back okay guys I got the new one just sitting in there tell the see the big difference between how how skinny the factory one is
factory one compared to the I believe it's a three core one okay so we got that in uh, I'm gonna test fit that shroud but uh yeah these transmission lines just pop in there and you got to put the clip in like that like that put two little clips in there and put on those hoses bottom hose top hose here of course we'll be using a new one and then we get it cut off uh, use my cutting wheel and cut this off here we don't need that them mounts so I just drilled the two holes in the bottom you can see it coming through here I wrapped a little plastic around there and put some rubber rubber along the bottom here although I think it hits well maybe not yeah it may hit it may hit in here But anyway, that is like this top piece. It's just a piece of aluminum. Nothing to do with the radiator. So, if that wears or whatever, it ain't going to hurt nothing. Okay, so let me, uh, let me start putting this together and see if that shroud fits. We don't know how close from the truck, to tr how far the radiator was shroud was out from the truck. Radiator support. So we'll test fit that hopefully I don't have to trim it up and it has the factory deal here to put it in I guess okay I'll be back okay guys so next day I got this bottom shroud in there but I had to cut a bunch of pieces from it there this was hitting the power steering pump um, it seems like everything is over this way a little bit because the uh, see the radiators even to the frame rail on both sides so that's centered and then a uh, shroud just clips into these these two things here and it can move a little bit not much but you can see the fan, the distance here, and you got a lot of distance here. Although that could probably be bent that way. But yeah, so I don't know what's up with that unless I got the engine over this way a little bit, but anyway um i won't know if the whole core support needs to be moved until i put the front end on then i got some other suspension work to do before i can do that so whether this core support can uh, needs to move over this way i don't know okay so anyway yeah i haven't cut this off yet and i'm about to but i just got the bottom one kind of in there and then the uh, top one just kind of just sits like that top one fits good don't have to cut nothing off that there's a little guide put that in there and I could actually just swing this over a little bit to bring the whole thing over if I need to need to move that bottom one I think there was just plastic clips that go in here okay so this just sits on top so we'll need to cut this off too I'm gonna cut this this off and then these off and this is just a piece of aluminum no nothing running through there free on or nothing so i might be able to i don't know how far well i'd hate to drill in there but i could mount 
two little screws there, but I'm not sure yet. I might do something else. I may, I may use a big strap from there to here. I'll have to see how the uh, factory deal fits on there. But that's basically that. Um, got the bottom hose on. I uh, wanted to put that on before the top hose. The top hose goes here. And then over to, over to here. And then I had to take this loose. There's a little... I think there's a bracket. Yeah, there's a bracket to the hose. I think it went like that. I think this little deal here. I think this one here goes goes there. And I think this one mounts to this. But I went down to get a belt and there's two different belts one for 105 amp and one for 130 amp alternator so I don't know one's wider than the other or something and then I didn't realize that it takes a separate AC belt so I wanted to do the belts before I uh, mount all this in permanently so uh, I'm going to have to take this belt off, bring it down there, match it up, I'll get an AC belt, but uh, when I do some AC work, uh, I may replace that compressor, because when I first bought the truck, been sitting up forever, started it up, turned on the AC and it worked, I had cold AC, and then it sat for a couple of weeks. Or maybe longer than that before I uh, decided to pull the engine. And then I had it running. I turned the AC on and then uh, nothing. And I check it and it's out of Freon. So since it was sitting and then started up, it must have blown a seal or something. And I don't know where, but it's most likely in the compressor. So I thought, well, maybe I'll just replace this compressor too. It ain't going to be cheap. But uh, I may have to do that eventually with the AC. And then this condenser, I cut the ends off. I may have to uh, buy a new condenser. I don't. They're not very much. They're under 100 bucks on eBay. Just to be on the safe side in case that was... Well, I don't think that would be leaking. It had to be the compressor, something that moves. Uh, it had to be the seals inside the compressor that, that blew from sitting and all of a sudden started back up and moved but anyway uh but for now i guess we can get a new belt since we're doing it it's right in here we'll get this belt this belt uh then we'll then we'll mount cut the end up cut this off and then uh, mount this and then get a uh, bracket see how that fits on here get some rubber underneath of it and then start on the fans. So I'll be back. Okay guys. I got this weird hose here put on. One hose goes to the overflow and then this splices into the uh, heater hose. And why it has to splice in is the factory one's only up to about here. It's too short. Plus this is uh, three quarters from the 68, and then this is uh, five eighths, I believe. So I had to get an adapter to splice it in. Anyway, that's that hose. But yeah, this is all this is all new. Anyway, this one and the other one. Okay, so got them in there. I probably should get some. Uh, this goes from the throttle body here into here. And I should probably get, you know, a couple of feet of that hose. Because that'll be the weakest link. You know, if that thing blows, phew, water everywhere. Okay, so anyway, but I put it all back together. Uh, got the little plastic clips. The bottom top shroud. Bottom to top. Um, this is 
is probably tilt up a little bit here. Everything's just kind of temporary right now. So there's the top hose goes in here. Little clip goes there. This hose here is probably about this long, this much too long, longer than the factory one. But it it doesn't matter. I didn't bother cutting it off. Okay, so everything's mounted in there. Um, so the only thing is a top mount. Now I believe Chevy has two different kinds, short one and a long one. It wasn't, I don't think there was one on here. If it is, it's this one. And then of course, all the bolts. I stuck the bolts back in there, but none of them line up to these three. The only ones that line up are these ones here. One, two, three. So, but this has a big lip on it here. So you have to cut this lip off and put that across and mount in these three holes. Anyway, it'll go up. It'll go up to about here. So we'll see how tight the edge. I, I don't have the the rubber that fits this even if it did it has two ends that stick up and I don't need that I just need a flat piece to give it pressure to hold it down so I can just cut up some rubber from an old hose or something and then once this is on there I can probably put a screw through there to here just to keep it a little tight and might put some ru rubber uh, around here to keep this from core support from hitting yeah I'll probably do that okay so uh, yeah and I'll probably get to paint it up too but let me go ahead and just temporarily mount that cut it up and uh, mount that and then we'll get on with the with the fan and stuff so I'll be back okay guys so next day um, I got this sanded down and painted. It was all rusty under there. And I cut up a piece of a hose end and just put them there. I think this is gonna work. I may redo it, but... And then these line up with these holes here. So we're gonna put some uh, nuts and bolts on there. And if I tighten it down like that, it'll get that edge. Although I might, I don't have a, a sheet metal brake or else I'd put it in there and bend the whole thing more like that. But I could do that and then put put a little screw there and there. Uh, I kind of got to have the front end on there to see. Because uh, it'll to move back and forth. So I don't know if the fender is going to mount here or here or what. And this edge is right on the air cleaner, so hopefully I don't have to trim this. Okay, but anyway, I'm going to take all this apart again to change a belt now. I just went down to uh, AutoZone. Uh, the old belt here I took off actually looks in really good shape. But uh, no matter what, you got to have a spare with you. You're a thousand miles from home. Uh, you got to have a spare. So the old one, which looks pretty new, is now the spare. So AutoZone has uh, two kinds. I think they got more than that. But anyway, they, they'll have the 90-day warranty for like 38 bucks. This one was like 52-something guaranteed for three years, and it's Continental. Same brand as the uh, radiator hoses. So anyway, I got that. This is the AC separate belt. Uh, that was another 20-something. And then this, although it doesn't look... This hose, I just asked him for some hose. I thought maybe they'd have a roll of it. But it was like 23-something for this hose. Anyway, it goes from the throttle body right here 
all the way down to here to the radiator so I'm going to replace that one at first he brought out I believe it was this hose and I said no that's too thick I need the one from the throttle body the radiator so actually I think they have this one and I may have to uh, get that one because this will be the only weakest link in the water hose you know I believe I don't I don't know if there's any other little I don't know what that one is I think that one's probably just air uh, those are the AC ones AC so anyway we got the heater hoses all the radiator hoses every every hose except this one that looks good and pretty thick but still you got to figure this is off of 2000, 2001 so they're you know 21 years old that's why I'm kind of replacing everything so anyway let me uh, take off top of the shroud probably this hose again and uh, put on these two belts put the old ones back in the package with the part numbers throw them in my toolbox so there'll be spares and I know what number to get next time and uh, put on this and we'll get back to this step where we are right now and I'll round it up some nuts and bolts and we'll bolt that on there see how much it sucks down on there I think it'll be all right okay then we'll get going with the uh, fan fan and there's two brackets here that the horns mount to uh, we're gonna have to alter this but we're gonna have to make sure the grill's gonna fit in there so anyway a bunch of screwing around probably but anyway I'll be back okay guys I just put this on there and snugged up the bolts and it actually fit pretty good she's uh this holds in the radiator pretty good this shroud is a little bit so I think the best bet is to put a screw through there and, th and there on both sides other than that everything looks good uh, that hose is tight against this air intake here oh we'll have to do something about that later okay now we're gonna put the uh, the big dual fans right under here so we got to make sure we don't we have enough room for the grill and the grill will fit in this hole and that hole right there worried about like that so we got it looks like plenty of room we'll see okay but of course of course all this is going to be in the way here so that's why we're going to have to trim that up okay and then these two brackets here not very important but they go in these two holes here that one and that one they go in there like that and then the grill attaches to these two little ones here that one and that one right there okay it goes on that side and that one goes on this side here and then we'll we'll be putting my truck horns put my truck horns in, pl in place of these two so we'll I'll just kind of mount them on there or whatever and see if we got enough room between them two for the uh, big fan so let me uh, got the fan in here let me take off them fans this looks like two bolts and it slides up take them off and we'll go over there and see if she fits I'll be back in a minute okay guys I just got it set in there by two screws just put one there temporarily and one here uh, and stuck this on there that'll fit the hood latch um, it's perfectly even with the bottom here flush right here not that it matters too much but when we build a bracket see this will
this piece here goes there but we're gonna have to cut we're gonna have to cut that out here cut this out and then right there we're gonna have to cut cut this off and make a bracket that comes down and bolts bolts up to this okay anyway that's I think where it's gonna go I kind of stuck these brackets on here to see where the grill will go now go in that little little hole right there be something like that so I don't know if there's enough room in there for that condenser I think that condenser may be too big I could say I tried like I said before I tried to put the if I put the condenser first I think it would fit with the grill but, like I said, these two ends here will be in here too far. But I don't know. I can try it again with some spacers or something. But uh, Yeah, let me try that. See if I can mount this. Mount that condenser in behind here. And then have this pull out more. There's really no nowhere to mount that condenser on here. I mean, I could build brackets, but plus it's. Oh, if I do that, I don't. Yeah, if I do that, this won't fit. But see, I was thinking about putting that over like that, but. And then these would be out in the right spot. I don't know. Let me mess around some more. I'll be back. Okay, guys. I just uh, taped this condenser to the fans temporarily. Um... I had to put it over on this end more so I have room for the connections. This connection here I went through and that goes to the top. Um, but I think I'm going to order a new condenser because it had these mounting tabs up here that I cut off because I was trying to fit it in here and mount it before I got the fan and everything. Um, that way I can mount little L bracket from there to here and then and then mount them in and it'll go right up in here I don't know if I can hold it up here and show you it's gonna go in something like that so you know I got enough room for it to the Freon to mount right there Okay, and I haven't checked the grill, but this is not going to fit the hood latch. It's not going to fit because it would be too close right there. Um, but I'll probably use hood pins. I'm going to buy a fiberglass cowl hood, and I'll probably just put the two hood pins. I think they go right in here. And then just do away with the latch. Um, a guy had one for sale, used but brand new. He never used it for 400 bucks. So I thought it was a pretty good deal. He advertised it 30 minutes from my house. I messaged him. Oh, I, I made a mistake. Uh, um, in this place, ended up being two and a half hours away. So I was like, ah, oh, that's a little bit too far. I said, I'd, if it was 30 minutes away, I'd, I'd come and get it. He said, oh, well, uh, I'll deliver it to you for 500 And I said, no, nah, I'll, just, I'll just wait. <coughs> so anyway, I can make a five-hour trip, two and a half there, two and a half back to go get it. No big rush for it right now. Until uh, I get this front end together. 
so anyway with the condenser I want to put some uh, spacers in here just some foam type stuff uh, so I think I'm gonna have to leave that because what I want to do is get a new condenser anyway I don't think this one's leaking but it's you know 21 years old and I busted off the tabs and I think I can mount them tabs right here and here and then uh, get all that mounted in I think it'll mount in pretty good should have enough clearance for the uh, brackets here right here and the uh, the grill and I, I might be able to modify this if not I can just leave that off and just have the grill mount on the two the two ends here that'll probably be good enough um, so anyway I'll be back later with a final wrap up okay guys it's gonna sit in something like that I got it propped up with a jack and some masking tape and I just kind of set them brackets in there with the grill and the grills barely gonna clear it so it looks like everything will fit except for that middle bracket like I said I'll use hood pins so I think that'll work I think I'm gonna get a new uh, condenser and then uh, this can fit in here under the top and then the other line the other line is here I'm gonna have to put some a foam spacer right down here to pull this away from there a little bit but that bottom line that's I still actually got that over here this line here so I think those lines will fit okay so I think I'll leave this video like that for now because it'll be you know who knows four or five days before I get a new condenser in okay I'll be back in a second okay guys filled her up with coolant <sighs> Filled her up with coolant, no leaks, fan doesn't hit, plenty of room. Okay, so I just wanted to give you an idea what it kind of looked like. I just tucked two screws there okay I ordered the new con AC condenser it's only $66 shipped it'll be here who knows when three four five days um, so anyway yeah that's gonna go behind here okay well next video on this possibly uh, I'll put that in show you it all finished but this is basically how it's gonna look uh, so it goes in behind here and it's going to have tabs that's going to screw onto here and here and then i'm going to make a little l bracket and this is just there's nothing below this and i'm going to put a screw in there and there and then we'll mount uh figure out some way of like mounting it here and here okay and then and then that'll be it and the grill the grill fits just perfect i don't have the brackets in those little holes there but you can just tell by it's sitting like that right like that and you can see it's going to have about an inch or two of room on each side so that'll be perfect okay now i just kind of hooked up the fans here so you can hear them blowing in and that's both of them so you can hook it up any way you want um, I believe the computer runs the fans on these from what I was told um, 
but like I said, I'm probably hook it up to a toggle switch. You could hook them up separately, run one or two. I'll probably just have it hooked up to run two on a toggle switch. And if it starts going over half, I just hit the switch. And um, But yeah, you can hook it up any way you want. And then if you reverse it, negative and positive, then they'll blow this way. But you don't want that. You want it to blow in when you're stuck in traffic. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, yeah, um, check out the radiators from them. I'll put everything in the description. Alloyworksplus.com and there's a a coupon code that they have they're having a special right now eight percent off until november 28th okay then after the 28th you can put in my code uh i'll write it in there it's not clunkers and classics it's it was too many words it's clunkers then the the little symbol for a and and then uh classic with no s on the end uh, so after November 28th, you can put that in as your coupon code and get 5% off. So yeah, check them out. Uh, they got good stuff. I've, I've used one on the uh, GTO. Uh, it, it would work great for the, for this car too. And like I said, they got every every radiator and setup you can imagine on there. Really cheap, two to three hundred bucks, with or without fans, whichever you want. Very fast shipping. Uh, so yeah, just check them out. And uh, I think that'll be it. We'll wrap this up. Like I said, next video on this or after that, I'll have the condenser on there. But it, it'll basically look like this. Okay, and, and all, all the radiator and hoses and belts and everything is all done. Um, so yeah, that's it. It's coming along. Uh, always reminds me of the Bruce Springsteen song there. Highways jammed with broken heroes on a last chance power drive don't be one of them guys every time i see a car broke down on the side of the road especially a hot rod that's what i think of that phrase broken down uh most likely because of a of uh, overheating so you put this system on your car you won't overheat unless you got something other you know drastically wrong with your blown head gasket or something but this will keep you cool, 110 degrees out, idling in traffic, stuck in some town out in the middle of nowhere for three hours because of road construction. You'll get through it with this. Okay, if you're just using your, your hot rod to go cars and coffee once a month or something, you don't have to worry about any of this. But if you're going to actually be driving it uh, across country and stuff to them cruises and events, this is what you need. And like I said, you can set it up any way, which way you want. But uh, if you can, you know, if it'll fit, get your fans to put in front of here, take off your, anyway. Okay, so uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And uh, we'll see you all next video. Thanks, everybody, for watching.